Uh, hey everybody, it's time to take this Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip out for a spin and try out C++. I've also decided to throw this into the mix. This is the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of RAM. This machine has been proving to be pretty good for a lot of developer tasks. You might have seen my video recently about that. This machine right here has been shown to be quite a powerhouse. And today I'm gonna do two C++ tests. One is gonna be a single core test. We're gonna do a quick sort algorithm and implement that in C++. Don't worry, you don't have to watch me type it all out. I I already have the code. I'm just gonna run it and we're gonna build it and run it and time it. Then we're gonna do a multi-core test, which is gonna take all the cores available and run an algorithm, a pretty complex algorithm. I'm gonna make a little prediction here and say that the single core test, because these are using pretty much the same cores, the result is gonna be the same on both of these. That's just a prediction. We're gonna test this out. But with the multi-core test, I predicted the Mac Studio is gonna win because that one has 20 CPU cores. This one only has eight. Is it gonna be a direct relation there? Is it gonna be a multiple? We'll see. All right, let's begin. Here's MacBook Air. I have quick sort and let's take a look at that just to show you what it looks like. Pretty simple. Here it is. It just does two halves recursively and so on. If you need to look up the algorithm, you can go Google that. I'm not gonna go into what quick sort is. There's different types of sorting algorithms out there. Quick sort is one of them. And we are creating 1 million random numbers stuffing them into an array and then sending it to that quick sort function. We are generating the random number each and every time that I run this application. And some of you mentioned in the comments that yeah, there's gonna be different sets every time. However, because we are generating 1 million numbers between zero and 99, the variation that we're gonna get is so small and I've run this many times in the past, there's barely any difference between the different sets that get generated when it comes to the results. And by the way, I did already run this on the MacBook Air in my previous videos, comparing it to the M1 Max, M1 Pro, and the Intel MacBook as well. I'll leave a link to the video down below, right below the like button. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like. Thank you very much. And you can also subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Now, first I need to build this. I'm gonna use G++ to do that. And there we go. I've built a binary called main. There it is right there. To run it, I issue the time command so I can time how long this takes and I do main. Then I also want to send the output to dev null. That way it's not uh, going to be printing out to the console, taking up extra time. And I'm going to set this up on the Mac Studio as well. I'm going to build it. Now, this is the unoptimized build, by the way. So we get a baseline and then I'm going to do an optimized build as well. We're ready. We're going to get our little friend here. Don't forget about our little friend. If anybody's not familiar with this, this is called the Schwarzenegger. We have a little bit of fun on this channel, don't we? Gotta have some fun. Can't be all work. I'll be like that guy in that movie. And let's go. All right. This is not going to take long, at least. I hope not. Hey, look at that. Look at that. We got our results, folks. And 15.2 seconds on the MacBook Air versus 15.1 seconds on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. That did run on one single core. If you need to see that again, here it is running. And I'm going to show you Activity Monitor. And in the Activity Monitor, you can see that main is running with 100 CPU usage. That means it's running on one processor or I should say one core of the processor. Okay, 15.2 and 15.1 here on the Mac Studio. Second run was 15.0. Now I will also run this test with an optimization. I'm gonna add the O3 flag. Thanks to all you folks that have commented about that since the last video I did on this. And I will add this from now on. There it is. It even gives me a much quicker build. So I ran this compilation on both of those and now I'm gonna run the actual test. Let's go. Oh, and that's much, much faster. Huge improvement here. 2.6 seconds on the M1 Air and 2.5 seconds on the M1 Ultra. Let's do that one more time just to get an average here. 2.4 and 2.4. So we're getting very, very similar numbers here. And that's the optimized version. So we're not getting that much difference here, as you can see. And that prediction that I made was pretty much correct. There are some slight variations because of memory usage and so on. But uh, this one has much faster memory and the bus speed. So overall, you get an improvement. But if you are running single core operations, then you're likely not to benefit that much 
from the Mac Studio. However, in most real world scenarios these days running most software, they're going to take advantage of multiple cores. Moving on to the next test. This is going to be the multi core test. And this is going to be a more realistic benchmark. And yeah, benchmarks is still not a real application. So make sure that you test the real application, the one that you're using if you're using C++. However, this is going to be a little bit closer than a single core application because most apps these days written in C++ are going to utilize multiple cores. Now let's take a look at what I'm running. Benchmarks game. You've seen me run this on this channel many times before. Which programming language is fastest? Pretty cool little uh, website if you want to check this out yourself. I'm going to select C++ here and uh, I want to get the Mandelbrot test. For those of you that are not familiar, Mandelbrot was a mathematician who uh, is responsible for creating those fractal patterns that you've seen before. I'm sure you've seen that. Anyway, here is the first one right here. I'll click on that one. And this one is going to basically fill up all the CPUs that are available and run on those. Here's the source code. All I'm going to do is just take this entire source code, copy it and paste it. Let's copy that and paste that in. Now I did already run this on the MacBook Air previously. You can see my object files there. I'm going to delete all that. That's from my previous test. And I'm just going to leave the CPP file in there. One thing I want you to note about this is this is something that includes optimizations. So if you're running this on an Intel based machine, or I should say, x64 machine, those processors come with certain optimizations that C++ can take advantage of. And there's some flags that can be set in your code to take advantage of these optimizations. These will be ignored on the M1 Apple Silicon machines and the M1 Ultra as well, because those optimizations are not defined. And if you run this kind of test with optimizations on an Intel based machine, it might actually be faster in certain cases than on Apple Silicon based machines that are not optimized yet. Those optimizations are probably on the way, but they're not optimized yet, especially for this particular test that I'm running. So I'm going to run this test and I actually made a couple of videos on that as well. You can check those out comparing the optimized versus the unoptimized Intel versus uh, M1 Apple Silicons. I'm going to run this just the way it is. And at the bottom of this page on every one of these tests and benchmarks game, you have the instructions. So this is how you build it. And this is how you run it. So let's first build it. I'm going to use G plus plus again, copy this command here, let's paste that in there. Now there is a little bit of a difference between how I named my files, I just called mine mandel.cpp. And this is not going to work. And I'll show you why in a second. If I run this compilation step, it says the CLang compiler does not support MArch Ivy Bridge. Ivy Bridge is an Intel based processor. It's actually an Intel processor. This command right here is assuming too much. It's assuming that I'm going to run this on an Intel based machine. So we can change that. And if you actually issue the command CLang dash dash print supported CPUs, it'll get a whole list of all the supported CPUs on this machine. And look at that Apple M1 is one of those. If I go and change this over here, instead of Ivy bridge here I can say Apple dash M1. It's still going to complain because well, M arch is not a supported flag. So what you have to do is change that over to MCPU. Okay, we're almost there. There's one more flag that's unused. It's already built my thing, but I want to remove it so we don't have any errors. And that's this MNO FMA flag. I don't know what that is. I'm not a C++ developer. If anybody knows what that is or what it can do for our code, let me know in the comments down below. Let's build this. And there we go. Created the object file. The next step is this right here. And that creates the actual runnable executable. So if we take a look, this is the program we're going to execute. So I'm going to give the time command Mandelbrot run and I need to pass in a parameter. So here in this situation, they're passing in 16,000 as an example. Let's start with that. Why not? Give me a moment while I do the exact same setup on the Mac Studio. All right, I've set this up and we're ready to run. He's back, the Schwarzenegger. Let's do it and let's go. You hear that beeping? That's what happens when this program outputs its output to the console. We're going to stop that. Don't worry. So uh, these results are OK, but they're not exactly what I want because this happens too fast. So we're not getting a good measurement out of it. A couple of things I want to do here is one, I'm going to send this output to dev null and two, I'm going to increase this to 50,000 as the parameter. Let's do this on both machines and let's go. Now we're seeing a bit of a difference, aren't we? Wow, look at this. <laughs> look at this. We've got 10.2 seconds on the MacBook Air. 10.2 seconds 
for 50,000 as the parameter. Ready for this? M1 Ultra, same exact test, same parameter, 3.1 seconds. Wow. And that's the difference between 8-core CPU and a 20-core CPU, folks. Holy smokes. Let's change this to 100,000 and go. This is probably going to take a while. Whoa. <laughs> the Mac Studio is done already. I was not expecting it to be that fast. That is fast. This is where the M1 Ultra truly, truly shines right here in this test. So far, my tests for the M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio have been like, eh, it's okay. But this right here, pure C++ code that takes advantage of all the cores right here. Look at this. 42 seconds on the MacBook Air M1 and 12.5 seconds on the M1 Ultra. That is huge, folks. I don't know if I'll get a direct benefit out of this because I'm not a C++ developer, but somebody out there is. And if that's you, this is looking pretty good. There you go, folks. Thanks for watching this. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and more tests. We've got maybe new machines coming out this year, so got to test those. Thanks, folks. I'll see you later.